Hello everyone, a little bit of an explanation here. You all saw the little little video that I started this with. Uh, I did that as an explanation of why I haven't had any Lord of the Rings videos coming up this week. I'm hoping to get, should be able to get one of each up later today, but uh, because of that, see, I came home a uh, day before yesterday now. Came home from work, uh, opened my door to have a little wave of water run out over my feet and uh, over my shoes and out into my garage because the cistern, the water tank on the back of my bath, uh, back of my toilet had something's gone wrong inside of it and it was pouring water out into my floor. Uh, the bathroom was about an inch and a half deep. The laundry room was about the same. And needless to say, the den, which are the three floors, the three rooms, at the uh, the lower part of my house uh, was totally soaked. Um, I'd say 75% of the carpet and the padding underneath is totally saturated with water. So for the last two days, I have been ripping up carpet, ripping up the padding, and running a, a shop vac and some uh, dehumidifier, uh, getting all the water out of there. I have been fortunate. Uh, none of my electronics were on the floor. And uh, the beast was even up off the floor, and usually he sits on the floor, but I've raised him up on some bricks lately to uh, increase airflow, so even he was up off the floor. So my computer didn't get damaged, nothing got damaged. Um, I had like one book that uh, was sitting on the floor and got soaked, but it wasn't a collector's item or anything like that or anything hard to get a hold of. It was a Harry Potter book, so that's easy enough to replace. And a few stacks of mails, otherwise it's just been a giant pain in the butt trying to uh, get all that water out and pull all that carpet out and throw it out before it starts molding on me. So that's why I haven't been uh, doing any Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, the only thing, a couple things I've had up was the the portal and the zombie side because they were already recorded a couple of weeks ago and just needed to be edited together. Something nice and quick and easy. So, but we'll be getting some more Lord of the Rings stuff up. Uh, but... Something nice and quick and easy that I can do in the meantime, Lord of the Rings related, is I showed y'all, right over here, the old 1977 War of the Ring game by SPI. Well, this is the 2004 version uh, by uh, Fantasy Flight Games, I think it is. Um, now, when I say a version, this is not a remake of this. It's not a remake. It's not by the same designer. It's not a hex-based, counter-based war game or anything of that sort, but it is in the same spirit and the same uh, the same theme. You know, one player controls the Fellowship and the Free Peoples trying to get the Ring to Mount Doom, and the other person controls the forces of Sauron and the Dark Powers, trying to capture the Ring and trying to overthrow the Free Peoples. So we're going to take a look at it here. Absolutely gorgeous box has the uh, the art by John Howe, who was one of the one of the uh, artistic designers on the uh, Lord of the Rings movies. Him and Alan Lee, I think, were the two art designers. John Howe was the one, as you can tell, his work is more of a more of a free flooring, free flowing kind of a bravaro bravaro type of uh, blood uh, uh, brushwork and all that. Very nice. We're gonna flip the box over now and let y'all see what the back of it looks like. There you go. It says, all about the hills, the host of Mordor raged. The captains of the west were foundering in a gathering sea. The sun gleamed red, and under the wings of the Nazgul, the shadows of death fell dark upon the earth. So there's the back. Tells you a brief history of the War of the Ring. What was going on, how they had to find the ring. Sauron wasn't expecting it. As you see, it is a game for... Hmm... It is by Fantasy Flight. Very good. It is by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, a game for... I think you can do... I think they say you can do up to four people, like two on a side, but it's primarily a two-person game. Um, just like the old War of the Ring was. It's primarily a two-person game, one taking the Fellowship, and one taking the Forces of Evil. Okay, we will take a look at what's inside the box now. All right, we have popped the top. As you see here, you've got the Fantasy Flight Game Spring Catalog for 2004. So be sure to uh, take a look through it and make sure that anything you want to order in spring or summer of 2004, you've got a good idea of it. Next up is the Quick Start Rules. 
just uh, mostly just a reference sheet, standard rules, quick start rules, reference sheets. I think there's one for each person. Uh, introductory rules, introductory rules, the quick start rules, the standard rules. There's probably a section of advanced rules and on and on, but not a whole heck of a lot of rules. I mean, look at look at how thin the rule pa the rule pamphlets are compared to the the monstrous uh, rule book that we had with the uh, War of the Ring over there, with everything being a uh, a bullet pointed. Um, cross-referenced uh, guy like one rule 1.2.3.7 stroke J right here's the board I'm gonna take it out and put it on the table and here we go another beautiful big big board this board's probably the same size as the as the uh, anniversary edition of, of train to ride that I showed y'all big board just about covers my whole breakfast table and as you see, just another absolutely beautiful map of uh, Middle Earth here from the Shire. You know, it doesn't have quite the same. You can't go all the way up into the Ice Bay of Forkale in that area, but it covers the main things. You got the Shire and Evendim and Buckland, goes across to the Misty Mountains and the Lonely Mountain, comes down to Mordor in the south. Once again, does not go. It goes just to Umbar. It doesn't really go down to where the Corsairs and all are. The the uh, the lower areas of Near Harrod and Far Harrod are just kind of represented over here. And Gondor and Rohan and all. All the various major citadels are uh, on the map. As you see, there's Orthanc there. You've got Lorien. You've got Moria. You've got Dol Gudur. And of course, over here, you've got Kirith Angol. Baradur in the Black Gate of the Moranin, facing across to Minas Tirith. So yes, a very gorgeous board, another wonderful representation. Over here in the box, you'll see all the various pieces that are sorted out into little plastic bags and all, and I will get them out and get them on the board now, so you can take a look at them. Just like the 1977 version, you have all your various characters over here that are all represented in-game by cards. Um, needless to say, they are a good deal prettier cards than the ones that... A uh, good deal prettier cards and better artwork than the ones that were in the 1977 game, as you would imagine, being that it was done by John Howe. As you see, here's Saruman, a corrupted wizard. Got a little flavor text, and he's got the Servants of the White Hand power and the Voice of Sauron power. You've got that. Let's pull up this one. There's the Witch King. Let's see what he looks like. Oh, quite the ugly mother, isn't he? You got the Witch King, the Black Captain. And he is a sorcerer and gives powers to Sauron if Sauron is at war. So various things like that. Then you have over here, of course, you got the Ring Bearers, Frodo and Sam, Master of the Precious. If the Ring Barons are alone in the Fellowship, immediately add Gollum to the Fellowship and make him the guide. Various stuff like that. You've got a good deal of event cards. The event cards range from, you know, the things that Sauron can do to the things that the, uh, the various free peoples can do. As you see, Thranduil's Archer. Recruit one Elven unit, regular or elite, in the Woodland Realm. Then immediately draw one strategy card. Or you can do Valor. Play only for free people's elite units in the battle. Add one dice to your combat roll. So that could be done. I never showed you all the event cards in the 77's game, but they had something much the same where you had random events and stuff each each, uh, each turn. Although these are more like what you're going to hold in your hand. Kind of a hand management thing. A new power is rising. Play only if Saruman's in play. Recruit two Isengard regular units in each of the North and South Dunlin and two units in Orthanc. Or you can play the Great Host. If after resuming casualties, your units are at least twice the number of the enemy units, the Free People's player must immediately take one casualty. So each one has kind of an event, and each one has kind of a use in battle that you can do as well. Now I'm not going to go through, there's like 410 plastic miniatures as you see there. So we will just come down and show a representative sample. Sorry, just knocked over a sliding chair over there. Do you see one here? This is Frodo and Sam. 
They always share a counter together because they are practically inseparable. And of course it says if they are by themselves, you add in Gollum to the mix. You have other uh, hobbits. I think that's, uh, judging by the armor, that's a uh, peregrine there. There's Gimli. And Gandalf the Grey. So you have those various items. That looks like that may be... I'm trying to see who that is. Is that Theoden? I think that might be Theoden there. So you got those. On the other side, you have a variety of units. There's all sorts of ground units. Uh, orcs and Harridrim and stuff like that. But then you also had the Warg Riders. Very pretty little miniature there. You have... Oh, there's a Rohirrim. So you got your mounted units for the free peoples as well. Here's a Mumak, an Oliphant. So you've got the Mumak units that the uh, Dark Forces can use. And of course you have the Nine Nazgul. And I'm thinking that right there, being that he's got the crown on and that sword in his hand, I'm thinking that is probably the Witch King right there. So there you go. And a lovely, lovely assortment of, of custom dice there as well. So there you go. That is the War of the Ring. I am hoping to uh, get to play it at some time. I've only ever played this game once, a complete game. I played kind of the solo variant a couple of times, but only played it once with an actual other human opponent um, in the, what is it, 12 years I've had it now. But... Uh, yeah, like I said, this is the first edition. I know the second edition is out now and uh, ranks quite highly among board game, the board game fans on Board Game Geeks and the War Gamers. So uh, I will be downloading the second edition rule book and uh, maybe I'll see it on tabletop sometime. I know there's a version of it out there. So thank you all for uh, joining me. Once again, I apologize for not being able to get around to producing uh, some more videos uh, quite yet. Um, I've got to get this flood handled and taken care of. Pretty much all the, the carpet and all is ripped up. All the 90% uh, of the water problems taken care of. Now it's just dealing with the insurance companies. So we will see you next time. Y'all have a good one. And keep on gaming. Bye-bye.